All right, so now um, we'll talk about the explainer. For this week, we, of course, we have Professor Uche Walike, Professor of Capital Market, joining us from our Abuja studio. Good evening, Professor. Yeah, good evening, Ini. Yes. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being there once again. For this week, we'll be making sense out of the concept of demutualization. Uh, could you explain to us what this concept is all about? Thank you, Ini. Uh, demutualization, as the name implies, um, is a term that describes the transition, the transition from um, a mutual member-owned um, organization um, that is um, not for profit to a company limited by shares and a company that is now out to make profit. Uh, Ini, as you know, uh, stock exchanges traditionally are organized um, uh, as mutual organizations. Uh, that is how they set out. Uh, for us in Nigeria, the Nigerian Stock Exchange also began that way. Um, it was incorporated as a company limited by guarantee, as a mutual uh, company. But today, of course, we know the Stock Exchange um, has completed the process of um, demutualization. Um, let me also say that um, up until uh, 1993, that was the, that was the situation. They were all, you know, uh, mutual member-owned um, uh, companies. A mutual organization, by the way, is an association of people, you know, who come together to pursue certain interests. Uh, in this case, uh, providing a platform, you know, for trading. So the, the owners are usually, members are usually the, you know, you know broker-dealers. But it, since 1993, the narrative has changed. Uh, when the Stockholm Stock, you know, stock Exchange, uh, based in Sweden, you know, demutualized, uh, converted to a limited, a, a limited liability company, company limited by shares and um, for profit uh, making um, organization. So since then, we have a, a couple of them that have also demutualized. It may interest you to note that um, the Association of Stock Exchanges uh, globally uh, is known as the World Federation of Exchanges. Uh, this association has about 70 members. And out of the 70 members, nearly 50 of them um, that's over two-thirds of them, you know, have um, demutualized. So it wouldn't be for nothing that these um, uh, stock exchanges are demutualizing. That's, that's speaking to the benefits. One of the benefits of um, demutualization uh, that uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, now known as the Nigerian Exchange um, a Group, of course, you know, uh, is now a, a holding a company a structure with three subsidiaries. Um, there is the the exchange, the operating arm, which is the exchange um, limited. There is the, the Nigerian exchange, um, the regulatory arm, and the real um, estate company. Now, this uh, company is now out to reap the benefits associated with the demutualization, one of which is raising the brand of the exchange. Uh, the profile of the exchange has now uh, you know, improved. The exchange is now in a stronger position to compete with uh, all other exchanges um, you know, across the world. So that opens up the exchange for a number of alliances, um, um, assistance from bigger exchanges, from um, more sophisticated um, uh, exchanges. So it has opened the doors uh, to, for, if, if you like, for uh, majors. Um, it may also interest you to note that um, following the mutualization, I'm sure you've heard of uh, the Euronext. Uh, Euronext was made possible by co the coming together of um, Exchanges in Paris, exchanges in um, Brussels, uh, that's in Belgium, and uh, the exchange in, um, in uh, Amsterdam, um, that's Netherlands. So the three of them came together and formed um, Euronext that's after the mutualization. When the Italian uh, boss was demutualized uh, in 2007, it also attracted the London Stock Exchange, you know, to partner with um, the Ita Italia, you know, Bossa Italia, you know, for um, collaboration. So a number of uh, benefits accrue to exchanges that, that demutualize. Uh, the other one too has to do with um, the corporate governance. As a mutual organization, the um, corporate governance structure, uh, the governance structure only catered for the members. Okay, uh, but now the governance structure is expected to cater for all the stakeholders, um, whether they are members, whether they are investors, whether they are uh, issuers, including the regulators. So we expect better corporate governance now coming from um, you know the exchange as a whole, and more importantly, you know, for investors, um, investors should also expect to see 
an exchange um, that is now more efficient, an exchange that, that now provides better services, um, and a market that is now liquid, you know, a lot more liquid than it used to be. Um, when we talk about liquidity usually, even from, from a theoretical point of view, we identify five critical uh, ingredients of uh, liquidity. One, we talk about tightness. So the tightness is uh, ensuring that the, that the spread between the uh, bid and ask price is quite narrow. Uh, we also talk about um, immediacy, which is the speed with which transactions um, are undertaken. The transaction cycle, for example, of course, you know, for equities market is T plus three days. So we expect that with the mutualization, with the uh, opportunities now to invest in infrastructure, we want to see investors are likely to see, you know, a shorter transaction cycle uh, from the T plus three to possibly T plus two, or even or even uh, T plus one, or even T. Okay. Now the other two has to do with the debt of the market. Debt of the market speaks to the number of buyers and sellers. You know, the number of orders. We expect to see more order flows you know, in the market following the mutualization. The other also is the breadth. Um, the breadth has to do with the volume of the orders, you know, will be, should be such that the market price is not um, substantially impacted. And of course, uh, finally, the issue of, um, you know, um, ability of the market to adjust to fundamentals, to correct itself. So these are some of the things we expect to see now following, um, you know, the mutualization of the, of the exchange. So, it's a good thing that that has happened. I'm pretty sure that investors in the Nigerian, um, uh, you know, capital markets will be better off for it. But there are of course concerns that come with demutualization. I must mention. Uh, uh, all right, all right, um, Prof. Speaking about Prof. the risks. Prof, we, we, I mean, you have given us a whole lot of explanation there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we really have to go. Thank you so much, <laughs> Prof always being there to give us, okay, you know, you. the nitty gritty of this concept. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank <music> you.